Hello, welcome back. So our lesson at the very end of our Connex unit is going to discuss parametric equations. And this lesson is split up into two parts. So this is the first part of parametric equations. Um, they're not too bad, actually. They're definitely not the worst thing we're going to learn. Um, I don't know about these worksheet numbers, guys. They might be off a little bit. It, I think it is worksheet 13. That's what I'm looking at here. Uh, but we're going to move ahead here to this diagram. We're going to be looking at parametric equations which basically um, take two variable components. For us, it's going to be the horizontal and vertical position of an object, and it's going to graph them using parametric equations. So it's kind of cool because they graph them x and y separately, and then we can see what's really happening. So um, one of our skills that we're going to be using is to rewrite the two components of, of our parametric equations into, into one, and then we're going to see how that relates to our quadratic functions that we've looked at in the past. Um, in our notes, um, let's see, this is not from our notes yet, but uh, it does say to express the position of the object both horizontally and vertically as a function of time, we represent them through parametric equations. So when you change your calculator to parametric mode, we're going to see that the variable changes to t. t represents time for parametric equations. Um, and then again, this is not in your notes, but this is a nice um, graphic for what we're going to be doing. T is called the parameter, thus the name parametric equations, and they refer to it as an arbitrary variable. Um, it's the independent variable. So it's something that we're choosing to define the problem. You know, I want to know what happens with the object between one second and three seconds. Um, so that's something that I arbitrarily choose. And the, the, the word arbitrary doesn't necessarily mean like you can choose whatever you want. You want to make sure it makes sense for your problem. So these do have a lot of application that we're going to be seeing. So, and some applications are stronger than others. Let's skip ahead to our worksheets formula. So this example is, I believe, from your textbook, and it does a really good job of showing you what's happening. So our parametric equations, the x variable is defined by t squared plus 5, and the y variable is defined as t over 2 plus 4 and they want us to sketch the curve between negative 4 and 4 seconds. So there's really no application to this question, it's just straight up algebra, um, pre-calc in this case. So what, what they've done is they changed their calculator to parametric mode. So it's really easy to do. <laughs> you just go to mode, and then instead of function mode, you're going to go to parametric. Ta -da. And then when you go to your y equals menu, you're going to see it's very different than what we usually see. It's in parametric mode, so it has an x and a y um, expression ready for you, and you're supposed to fill in what they have. I already forgot what they were, of course. So let me go back. t squared plus 5 and t over 2 plus 4. All right, so this variable key is going to do t's now. So t squared plus 5 for x and t over 2 plus 4 plus 4 for y. And then you can set up your table however you want, but remember it's going from negative 4 to 4. Um, so I'm just going to have it in ask mode. I think that's fine. Sometimes we're going to mess around with the table settings and we're going to count by something else. So back up, I got to go to negative 4, and then I would have copied all these ordered pairs. So remember when we're graphing this on a rectangular coordinate plane, um, we're graphing the xy ordered pairs. The t is actually not part of our graph but it's kind of cool because it relates it. Um, so when I go back to my file here, they've already done all this work for us, and they plotted them starting at, um, I'm going to say t equals negative 4, but what they're really plotting is the ordered pair 21, 2. So that would be right here. And then notice they have little arrows, like showing you the direction, the path of the object. Um, there's a problem coming up in our notes. It's about like a ladybug. It's kind of lame, but it's, I think it's cute. Um, so this is the path of the object going from uh, negative 4 seconds to 4 seconds. So it's graphing not only horizontal position, but also vertical position. Pretty cool, huh? All right, so these are parametric equations are used to represent curves that are not functions. So clearly this is not a function. It doesn't pass the vertical line test, so it's a way for us to represent um, the situation. So this is in our notes. So we're going to be changing up in parametric mode in our calculator. We're going to program this into y1. 
is no x and this into y in parametric mode i'm going to pause the video please pause uh, yourself as well and get this all typed in make sure you switch to parametric mode before you start typing so we have our parametric functions typed in equations typed in and i'm going to go to our table and it's just an ask mode so i'm just going to scroll around until i see what i need they want from negative three to four seconds so i'm copying all these ordered pairs into my table negative 15 12 and so on and so on and of course pause the video so you can do this as well but oh i'm at a pause because i need to copy it all right well that took me like an age <laughs> so i graphed all the ordered pairs that we came up with on the um, interval from negative three to four and those are integer time intervals of course and then i kind of can't really see them well but i drew in some arrows indicating what direction this object is flying um, yeah, there they are and then the two important points that we need to point out are the endpoints so the beginning and the end endpoints here and the two endpoints are negative 15 12 and 13 19. so there's I think that's the end of that problem. I just want to show you how to change your calculator to parametric mode and get a graph of it. Fantastic. Those endpoints are going to come into play later on. So this question is just an extra one. Um, they're explaining to you how to take two parametric equations and write them in what they call rectangular form, which is like the coordinate plane system that we usually graph in XY ordered pairs. So because they have a common variable of t, they're going to rewrite one equation in terms of the other one. So they take uh, usually the x parameter, and they solve for t, and then they use that expression and they plug that in for the other equation. <laughs> so they rewrote it as t equals negative one-third x, and then they took the negative one-third x and plugged it into that guy right there. And then they do the best job they can to simplify it. Um, they came up with this, which that should look like a familiar quadratic equation to us. So, and if you notice these curves, when I go to graph them, they, they look like quadratics because they are, and, and we're going to be graphing both the horizontal and vertical position as a function of time when we're in parametric mode, um, and it is the position of the object in terms of time in rectangular mode or regular graphing mode. So that's called eliminating a parameter. So basically it's substitution. This question is already done for you on your notes, but they did something very similar. They took this x parameter and they solved for t so then this was plugged into the other parameter for t and then they simplified as best they could so um oh no they didn't simplify we gotta keep going here so when we're squaring this fraction it's easiest if we just square the numerator and denominator so x plus 4 quantity squared over instead of 4 squared let's say that's a 16 plus 1 so you could write this as 1 16 x plus 4, no, not 4, hello, try again, we go 2, 2, x plus 2, quantity squared, thank you, plus 1. And that is like the old school formula for a parabola, where the a value is in front, and then you can see the vertex. If you wanted to rewrite that um, into our new formula that we're using for the conic sections unit, um, well, let's see, a couple of things, oops, squared. A couple of things would have to happen. We'd have to um, subtract the 1 over. Yeah. <laughs> and then we'd have to multiply by this a value, a reciprocal. So it would be like a 16 in front of a y minus 1 equals x plus 2 quantity squared. So that's that new transformational form of a parabola that we've been using. Um, I am OK today if you want to leave it in rectangular form or go to this new form here. Both are acceptable. Alright, so this directions here say write example number one uh, in either form. So this is a new equation, eh? Alright, so we're going to take this equation for the x parameter and we're going to solve for t and then we're going to substitute. So isolating for this t, the first thing I do is add the 3 over and then I divide everything by 4. I'm not going to make that pretty right now because I don't really care. But this is now going to be substituted in for t into the other parameter. So y equals t squared plus 3, but we're plugging in x plus 3 over 4 squared. So technically that's acceptable. Let's make that a little prettier though. Let's say it's y equals quantity x plus 3 squared. 
again over a 16. Um, plus 3, that's a fine answer if you want to get this in the transformational form from our new unit. Um, you'd subtract the 3 over, and then you're going to have to multiply by the reciprocal of 16. Yep, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Equals x plus 3 quantity squared. So, either one of these formulas are great. Um, sometimes it helps to practice the newer formula since it's fresher in your mind, but also we don't have a lot of experience with it, so why not? All right, so here we have, um, we're supposed to sketch the curve, the parametric equation over the given interval, and um, find the endpoints. So, this doesn't get real exciting, does it? <laughs> um, we would have to make sure our calculator's in parametric mode. I mean, there's nothing wrong with you coming up with all these endpoints yourself. We could, but like, why, right? So, I'm going to pause the video, and what I'm going to need to do is get myself a T table here, where I have the T parameter and the X and the Y parameter. So remember, this these X values are coming from the equation T squared plus 4, and then the Y values are coming from the equation T over 2 minus 3. So you pause your video, I'll pause my video, let's meet up, let's get all the points, and let's plot them while we're at it. Took me a while. <laughs> All right, so um, plotting from negative four to four seconds, we plotted each one of these ordered pairs starting here and then looping around to there. And we create this parametric equation. It's lovely, and the endpoints are located at this guy and this guy. So 20, negative 5, and 20, negative 1. So I don't know how exciting that is. Oh, it does have a little note there. It says use. Um, T steps of 0.1 to make sure your curve is smooth on your graphing calculator if you wanted to graph it that way. We haven't been looking at the graph um, through the graphing calculator <laughs> because my graphs are so amazing, right? No, uh, but we could go from negative 4, no, negative 4, to 4, and then stepping by 0.1. Um, I think at some point in your notes it says to try um, zoom square. So let me just play around with that for a minute. Where is square? Oops, I missed it. It was right there at the top. I missed it. Zoom 5. Oh, not what I wanted. Oh, Abruzzo, you're so silly. I don't even have the function typed in. <laughs> I used my notes. So this was a previous problem. Um, but we would set up our window a little better. But it, the, the note on your notes says to count t by 0.1. And that gives you a little better, smoother curve. It won't be so <laughs> rough looking. If you count by integers of 1 on your graphing, um, it only tries to plot those particular points. And it's not, it's not real pretty. Uh, I don't really know why this one starred, but I'm just going to skip it because I'm kind of bored of getting tables. So this one's lovely, and you plot it from 0 to 9 and it ends up looking like this. It's really cool. Check it out on your own time. So this, um, the back of the worksheet here, I think this is going to be your assignment. So we'll probably work through a few together in class, but basically the skills that I'm going to ask you to do are write them in a rectangular form, which is the fancy way of them saying solve for t here. And then whenever you find that, plug it in for the other parameter. And then you're going to get an equation over here. Okay. So continuing on, I think there's some projectile motion questions. We haven't discussed this yet, so let's keep on going with our notes here. We, we know, because a lot of us have physics, that projectile motion has a, a trig relationship with the math. You know? So the x variable, the horizontal position, can be modeled by this equation, t times times initial velocity times the cosine of the angle for which it's launched. So launched, kicked, thrown, any of those things. Um, and then for the vertical position, this is the equation, which we've seen this one before in Algebra 2 and in Pre-Calc. Uh, negative 16 is the constant due to gravity. Time times initial velocity, this time times the sine of the angle at which it's launched or kicked or thrown and then plus the initial height, because that changes the projectile's path if you start it three feet off the ground versus on the ground, 
we we all know this we experience this in everyday life all the time um, and there's something kind of cool you can do in your calculator to model the projectile motion is you can change the way the cursor shows up so rather than just draw, like drawing a curve there's some other options um, let me go back here if you flip backwards oops, with your cursor and and you go back to where the line is it's going to give you a whole bunch of options so if you get down to the line option and you keep going like you can make it look like a ball you can make it look like a ball with a you know a comet tail coming off of it um, this is just a ball going through the air i'm just going to choose that one for fun and remember i have an old thing i'm modeling right now so it's going to look kind of lame but when i go to graph it isn't that fun oh that's cool so you can go back and you can change it to the ball with a tail, that way you can see the path. I like that one the best. So that's kind of fun. I don't know. Maybe you hate that, but very nice. <laughs> All right. So that's that's the cool thing I want to show you on the calculator. Let's talk about how we can build functions um, based on some information in a real life problem because we have yet to see like a real life problem. So here we have a, kick, a soccer ball is being kicked with an initial velocity of 35 feet per second. <laughs> and that would be the initial velocity for both of our parameter, uh, parametric equations, the x and the y. Oh, there. Because clearly, the velocity at which you kick the ball is going to change how far and how high the ball travels. And then there's some more information. The angle that it's kicked is 48 degrees, and the ball starts 2 feet above the ground. So this is your initial height. This is your initial velocity, uh, nope, that's your theta. <laughs> I don't know what symbol I just drew, but it was not theta. Try that again. This is theta. And then initial velocity, there we go, that was 35 feet per second. So what they're going to want us to do is create the parametric equations using these new, like, physics-looking formulas. So I don't really care how you, what order you set them up because of the commutative property. But usually what I do is I write um, T times it was the cosine of, or sorry, the velocity times the cosine of theta. So the velocity was 35 times the cosine of theta, which is 48. Keep in mind, we're going to need to be in degree mode if we're going on a calculator for any of these. Um, for the y parameter, it's negative 16 t squared plus uh, any order again, but t times the initial velocity, which is 35, times the sine of 48, and then plus your initial height, which is 2. So any order that this polynomial looking thing shows up in your calculator is fine. Just make sure that these are all together in a multiplication problem somehow. And if you think about parameters and windows and what would make sense, um, we're kicking a soccer ball, so like, I don't know, I'm not very good, but I'm thinking time maybe from like 0 to 3 or 5 seconds or something. And then x represents how far the soccer ball goes. And again, I don't, I don't really know. <laughs> but um, I think when I originally did it, I set up like 50 feet. Just kind of guess. And then y is how high the soccer ball goes. So again, I don't really know. Um, I think I set up 30 when I originally did the problem. I don't play soccer. I'm not really sure how far a ball goes in the air. But... Uh, <laughs> oh, so if you wanted to graph this on your calculator, you sure could. In parametric mode, you'd type this baby into the x parameter, this in the y parameter. Um, make sure you're in degree mode when you graph this, and set up your windows accordingly. And you, and I would change to like one of those ball options for the cursor. I think that's kind of nice and neat. Um, they don't actually want you to solve any. Oh, no, they, there are follow-up questions. All right, so I'm going to pause the video, and I'm going to get my functions typed into y equals um, in parametric mode. So you do this thing. So now they have some follow-up questions here where they want us to answer. Um, find the time until the ball hits the ground, so height is zero. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my table. I didn't type my function in yet. Time out. <laughs> All right, I have my parametric functions in. Um, I'm going to skip the graphing component to it completely, but I'm going to go to my table, and I'm going to count by, instead of ones, I'm going to count by, like, point ones. And I'm going to start it at... Uh, Man, I'm going to cheat a little bit. Let's see. I'm going to start it at zero, at one second. All right, so going to our table. And remember, I'm looking for um, 
what they ask, when the height is zero. So height of zero would be a vertical position here, right? And, oh, I didn't change my mode yet. See, this is what happens when you have the wrong mode, people. Go to degree mode. All these things I told you to do, I forgot to do. All right, now I'm going back to my table. There we go. So I'm looking for in my Y column when it would have hit zero feet, and that would have happened right around 1.7 seconds. So there's a couple things I know from that clue. At 1.7 seconds, the ball was 39.8 feet horizontally away from the kicker, and it was hitting the ground. So jot down those two pieces of information. And then there's another question we could ask is, this, how high did the ball get? So when I look at the height here, I notice that it kind of turns around after a while. Um, back up a little bit show you a little more right here it goes like 11 12 back to 11 so the ball is turning around at some point here um, if I look at my graph which I didn't change my window yet I'm gonna zoom square that and see what happens I didn't set up my axes though so this might be bad yeah it didn't work all right <clears throat> so I'm gonna set up my time from 0 to 3 we already had a window set up, so I should have listened to myself. 0 to 50 and 0 to 30. I could have also traced along the curve this way um, and found you know, where approximately the height is here. It doesn't allow you to find maximums and zeros and intercepts and stuff of parametric. It's just a little too complicated. Oops, back up. <laughs> so it's right around like 12.5, 12.6. Um, feet is how high up the ball went. So my estimation of 30 feet was way too big, but that's okay. All right, so those are the kind of questions we can ask you in parametric mode. Um, it's all a matter of, you know, can you adjust your window and your table and your change in table accordingly that works for the problem. I'm going to stop the lesson there. Good luck!